could. We got the day ties off, got everybody. And I remember when the lieutenant, the big tall guy, uh, his glasses were hanging off his ear like this, hanging down. So when I wrapped him in his poncho and, and his eyes were still open, I put his glasses the same way that I found them. And I was always going to go see his family, but I never did find out his real good fast name, and I'm still thinking about doing it somehow. Uh, and the kid helped me, a new soldier, and he was a little reluctant to handle dead people, but we got him squared away in about ten minutes. And uh, wrapped them up in the ponchos and, and buried them. And that afternoon what saved us is uh, a tank square outfit busted through and opened up the pass so we could get on back to where we belonged. Anyway, that the colonel before that threw down his helmet right behind me and was a regimental commander. And he threw that helmet and he said, he turned to me and he said, I'm 28 years in the Army and I've never been in a separate position position like this. And he just put out a long spiel last week about a hundred dollar fine if you take your helmet off. <laughs> so his sweat was running down his face and I said, Colonel, you, I, I don't know. I said, we're getting ready to attack this position right here. You're a little bit forward. And he said, I would like to make you a lieutenant. I said, I don't want to be a lieutenant. I want to be a master sergeant. And then you can, I was a five star. I want to, then I'll be a lieutenant. He said, give it to that guy there. And he said, I will. So he made him, made that sergeant ham a staff sergeant, a lieutenant. The last I ever seen him, I don't know what happened to him. But anyway, I didn't want it. I wanted after I wanted to go up to get all six stripes. Because it's rumored that all platoon stars will be moved to six stripers because it's sending all the lieutenants to Europe to get that war over. And uh, the platoon sergeant was doing all the work anyhow. And uh, anyhow, shortly thereafter, that's when the, uh, the war come to an end or and everything. I was in this hole with a field artillery observer putting fire down where he thought they thought he needed it and it come over his radio. And it, we just dropped that big bomb on uh, and the war might be over. That's where... Uh, Oh, okay. One day or time, I, was, I know what she's talking about. We was on this mountain, I'll tell you, up on another mountain. We're in the same area. And everybody was living in filthy conditions to begin with. We, everybody had hepatitis A or whatever B. Everybody had the runs, and everywhere you moved, you couldn't move because you're sliding through someone's poo. And you couldn't set up because there's a lot of machine gun fire sweeping where we're all dug in. As soon as we took that hill, we set five guys down with to get water at the bottom, and all of them got killed coming back up the hill. And the jacks all surrounded it, so you couldn't move. You just, and that's when I counted. All these, at night time, they tried to overrun us, which they did a couple times. And this, once at one time, I told the daughters, just as many dead bodies, and everybody had dysentery for three and four days. They, and uh, some, I counted 230-some flies that I could see on me. And I remember taking the zig, we dropped this dropped this rations out of a Piper Cub. We didn't have no choppers in World War II, so it was either a fighter aircraft or a Piper Cub for artillery fire. Dropped these anti diarrhea pills down on us. And uh, what water they dropped down, most of it split was in cans, but we got a little water that way. But on the fourth day, but then what happened was on this mountain, and uh, in the mountains, there's a lot of mountains in Luzon, and nighttime you get that heavy fog. Well, these Japs all come up real close, maybe several hundred of them. And you got fog on the mountain, and you and uh, you're up there any high in the mountain, and dark and fog, and when the artillery was firing these big flares, where well, you can't see anything, till it's right on top of you, and 
So one day we heard them coming, so they overran our positions. When they overrun your positions, nobody could see anybody what it was. And uh, you have to, they, they didn't want you to use a firearm when that happened because you might shoot one guy and the M1 will go through three or four people. You might kill a couple of your own people and they want to use the cold steel on them. Well, when they overrun your position, you run around in the dark, you don't know who you're running into. And I had a, a bad thing to talk about. I seen this guy run up to me and I could see his hands up like that. I knew he wasn't an American soldier. I didn't know what was in his hand. I, might have been a rifle, might have been a saber, I don't know. But you don't take a chance. They put, you put on the cold steel and I run them through. When you do that, when you hit it, pull it out, he puked all over you. And I remember four or five days later, I was still in another place with the same uniform, dirty clothes on. And they, Pacific War wasn't like in Europe where you had up on these damn mountains and jungles, you, you, you just get filthy, you stay. When everybody had this hepatitis, they just, some of them, or this, when they die of red, they cut the rear end out of their trousers, puke and dirt and crap all over you. A week later, I was there where all these dead jacks piled up in front of you, all around bloating balls of maggots. And I, well, once I looked down, I see these maggots crawling out of my pocket. <laughs> They'd been over there where they got puked in, uh, in my fatigues. And I counted, what I could count was like 237 flies I could see on me. It's no wonder when we got out of there that I, when we started rounding up prisoners of war, I was getting so weak I couldn't do much. I went down with the, Hepatitis A, which is a viral infection of the liver, and you, and you get that. And I asked the doctor, I said, why is all these guys the same condition in this ward and some of them are dying? He said, well, you've been living in filth. That's how you get hepatitis A. It's a viral infection of the liver. Your liver swells up and your stomach can't, it pushes against it and throws everything out. But. Uh, at one time, the elements of nature sometimes is as much misery to you as, as the enemy, because of whatever. Yeah, well, later on, we was moving up along the coast and then uh, lose on there, and uh, we was filthy dirty, and they stopped along this highway, and there was a place called Haganoi, Haganoi Bullock Can. And everybody, the civilians with all this, run out to look at us and thank us for being there. And uh, one lady named Lucy said, would you like to wash your clothes? Because we were muddy and filthy. And we said, me and this other guy said, yeah, we'd like to have that done. Said, come in. We couldn't that with her family, her boys. And that we, they took our clothes. Well, we had to put on some of their clothes which is against the rules, you know, if they found us with no clothes on, they'd want to court-martial you, but we had a chance to get them washed right quick, which we did, and got them done. Which one are you? Point to you. This is me right here. Me right here, no. right here, and this guy here is from Kentucky. And then down. And yeah, and over here, there he is again, and there I am. And uh, he's dead now. I used to go down and see him. He lived out in Cincinnati. he come down and see me several times, him and his wife. But then he, they both died. But, uh, that's why I got, that's against regulation. It'd be caught in any type of uniform, but I didn't have a uniform. I just put them on to try to get my fatigue washed. <laughs>